In this lesson, we're going to learn about how our view of the atom gradually changed as scientists made new discoveries. As you saw in the previous lesson, John Dalton, a British school teacher, developed Democritus's view of the atom with his atomic theory of matter. Though his theory predicted how atoms behaved, he couldn't really explain much about the structure of the atom. Nearly 100 years later, a British physicist, J.J. Thomson, performed an experiment using a cathode ray tube, or CRT. It was in this experiment that he first realized atoms have smaller, negatively charged particles inside of them. Using some physics stuff, Thomson was able to determine the charge to mass ratio of this particle, a particle that measured 1.76 times 10 to the 11th coulombs for every kilogram of mass. This led to a new model of the atom, one in which the majority of the atom was this spread out, diffuse, positively charged material with negatively charged particles embedded in it. It was called the plum pudding model named after a popular English dessert made of pudding containing raisins. Yum! We might better identify with a chocolate chip cookie in which the electrons are the chocolate chips, while the positive part of the atom is the rest of the cookie. The point is, we now have the model of an atom that includes negatively charged particles stuck in a positively charged matrix. Robert Millikan, an American physicist, performed an experiment using tiny drops of oil. These oil drops were given a charge and then moved between two electrically charged plates. By using that physics stuff, Millikan was able to determine the amount of charge on an electron. Using this newly measured value and a measurement determined by J.J. Thompson, Millikan was able to calculate the mass of an electron. This can be done by applying the principles of dimensional analysis. Millikan measured the charge to be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Thomson had previously determined that the charge to mass ratio was 1.76 times 10 to the negative 11th coulombs for every kilogram. So the mass of the electron was calculated at 9.09 .09 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And that is tiny. Not too long later, another scientist, Ernest Rutherford, conducted an experiment of his own that helped us learn more about the structure of the atom. In Rutherford's experiment, he took a very thin sheet of gold foil and surrounded it by a screen that would flash every time it was struck by particles of radiation called an alpha ray. He fired a beam of these alpha particles toward the gold foil expecting they would go right through the atoms, since the current model of the atom assumed that the material in it was spread pretty thin. It should have been like firing a shotgun toward a piece of paper. Rutherford was surprised to find out some of these particles were deflecting sideways. A few even bounced backwards. I imagine he probably blamed his research assistants for messing up the procedure. Nice job, Geiger. Didn't you focus the radiation correctly? These results undoubtedly baffled the team, since it really didn't fit in with the current model. How could a piece of paper stop the bullet from a gun? Or a plum pudding model stop alpha radiation? Well, Rutherford realized it was time for a better model. He suggested that there was something very dense, yet very small inside the atom. Something that occasionally might deflect or turn around an alpha particle. Rutherford proposed that atoms contained a small, dense nucleus at the center, while the rest of the atom was empty space. This model, known as the nuclear model, places a nucleus in the center and electrons way outside the center of the atom. So, in a few short years, the concept of an indivisible atom was shattered as scientists began to discover the subatomic, or smaller than an atom, particles. The electron was first seen by Thomson, though he merely called it a cathode ray. Not too long after, Rutherford discovered that protons exist in a tiny nucleus at the center of an atom. Still later, 
James Chadwick, another scientist, was able to prove the existence of a neutral particle in the nucleus, called the neutron. So let's summarize. Atoms are made of three subatomic particles, the proton, the neutron, and the electron. Protons carry a positive one charge, while neutrons are neutral. Electrons have the same charge as a proton, but in the negative. Protons and neutrons both weigh about the same, one atomic mass unit, or AMU. Electrons are much smaller. It would take nearly 2,000 of them to equal one AMU, so we generally describe their mass as negligible, or essentially zero. Protons and neutrons are both found in the nucleus, while electrons exist relatively far away from this, in an electron cloud. It wasn't until years later we began to understand where electrons exist, and it's still kind of tricky to describe their locations. Sometimes we describe them in orbits, or electron clouds, or shells. But for now, we'll just say they're outside of the nucleus. Through the work of several scientists located in different countries, but working together, our concept of the atom was developed. So it began as a vague idea that atoms were these indivisible particles that made up all matter. Later, Thomson, Millikan, Rutherford, and others began to change that model to a more accurate representation of atoms. It's that model that we're going to continue to build on as we build our understanding of matter.